Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a couple of weeks here. I've been pretty busy at work and with life, but getting back to finishing up this series. So today we're going to, uh, this week we're going to wrap up our due diligence series on Walmart and just performing basic due diligence. In this video, I'm going to show you something that I think I actually took for granted and assumed a lot of people understood how to do this, but maybe that's not as um, true as I thought, but just showing you where to find the financial data and the data that we pull in and why we're pulling it in is what we're going to cover in this video today. So first things first, um, you can go ahead and you can download this Excel file. There will be a link in the description and you'll be able to follow along with all these numbers if you'd like. But um, what we'll do, um, I have an income statement and a balance sheet statement tab. And I already have the data entered in here just so you don't have to watch me manually copy it. But I'm going to walk you through where I get it and why I pulled the data that I did pull. So go on over to sec.gov and you'll go ahead and click this little drop down, uh, more search options, and you can type in stock ticker Walmart. This will pull up all their filings. We're going to filter on 10Ks. So I use five years of income statement data and um, four years of balance sheet data. Reason being is it just gives you kind of a few years worth of data to kind of observe and identify any trends when we build our DCF. So First things first, I uh, open up the first three 10Ks. So I have all three of those open here. Um, and we'll just start with this one. So this is the oldest one. When you open it, it's going to bring you to this front page. Scroll down. You can click financial statement, supplementary data, and scroll down. And we'll see 2017, 18, and 19 are the years reported in here. So we can get the 17, 18, and 19 data pretty easily. You can see I copy over. Um, pretty directly from the income statement, most of these line items. It's total revenue, um, right? So net sales, membership, and other income, and they'll give us total revenue. And then COGS, here I'm just using cost of sales as the COGS. And then operating, selling, general, and administrative is this um, line here, which is going to be our OPEX. Formula gets us the operating income. Interest net, so they provide that. I didn't think it's um, worth the time to copy over all three lines. I don't think there's a lot of um, value there. And then this other gains and losses for me is just the combination of loss of extinguished debt and other gains and losses. So we have that piece and, you know, we're going to copy that over for all five years and it'll be the same. So this is, oops, the oldest 10K. Um, and then if we go one more year forward, right, then you'd get your 2020 and come to this one, you'd get your 2021. Um, so every year they kind of increment at one. Now you'll also notice I pull a very small amount of information from the cash flow statement. So if you scroll down below this, oh, actually that is the cash flow statement we're already on. Uh, but if we start, if we're on the income statement, right, you scroll down, you'll then have comprehensive income, balance sheet, shareholders equity, and then the statement of cash flow. So here on the statement of cash flow, what we're really looking for is non-cash expenses that they're adjusting for. The reason for that is we're gonna use this when we build out our DCF. We're trying to calculate free cash flow um, from our standpoint, so an unlevered free cash flow, not the cash flow from operating activities or anything like that. Um, just a very specific unlevered free cash flow um, that we're going to calculate. So it's all the cash the business is generating, basically. So from here, what we really need, if you're not familiar with the cash flow statement, it starts with net income, and then it's going to adjust for um, changes in cash and non-cash related items. And so we will capture most of these items um, on our DCF, but the big thing here is DNA we want to capture. So we call that out and we copy that over. Um, the other thing we would look for is if they had large stock compensation. It doesn't look like they do. I'm not seeing large stock comp on here. Um, you know, so nothing on there that's really large and um, alarming. And then the next piece we want is their capital expenditures. So if you go down to the cash flow for investing activities, what you'll see here is payment for property and equipment. So that's going to be your purchases of PP and E. Sometimes there will also be intangible assets. So if they have purchase of intangibles, you would want to capture that. Um, and then there may also be an amortization of intangibles. So you'll see that a lot more in software companies, um, but that is something to look out for. So payments of property um, and equipment, we copy that over. We have these numbers here. Um, the last thing we copy over is the balance sheet. I always leave this as a separate tab, just kind of keep it separate because I do a lot of math on the income statement tab. So. If we scroll back up to the balance sheet, you'll see I don't copy over the whole thing. I'm looking for current assets and then all of the liabilities. And the reason for that is when we build up our DCF, um, we're going to calculate working capital, which is current assets minus current liabilities. And then the reason we copy over the rest of the liabilities is because we need to calculate um, our 
total debt. So we're going to need the long-term debt portion as well. So you'll see here, right, cash, cash equivalents, receivables, inventories, and prepaids. We copy all of those over, gives us our total assets. And then if we come down here to the liability section, right, we got short-term borrowings, account payable, all of this good stuff. And then we copy over these items right here. But no reason to copy over the equity piece. Um, we're not using that for our DCF. So this is just a really quick video just to show you where the data comes from. Um, I think I assume, you know, in a lot of my videos, people know where I'm pulling this financial data. And maybe it's not that obvious if you're kind of a new retail investor and this is a helpful reminder for you. Um, so all the financial data will be in here. And this is going to be kind of the baseline data we're going to use for a little bit of our DCF. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a deeper dive on the revenue. Um, in one of our earlier videos, we pulled out a lot of good information um, on Walmart out of the 10K. And I think they actually break out um, somewhere in here. They break out the revenue a little bit better. So page 79 and 80 is what I had recorded as a note. So if we scroll down there, what we're going to do is we're going to copy over these revenue schedules and we're going to forecast out revenue because that's going to be the biggest driver to our model is the top line. Um, so let's see, what do they have? 79. So they give us revenue by U.S. operations. And then it looks like we also get revenue um, at a couple different levels. So we have Sam's Club, Walmart, Walmart US. And then here they give us by region. Here they give us by category and by category. So we're, we'll copy over this data as well in the next video and we'll forecast out some revenue. Um, and we'll we'll create a new tab for that in our model. But um, yeah, this was just a quick video to show you where to pull the financial data. Next video, we'll go through the revenue. The video after that, we'll link everything up in the DCF and finish the last assumptions and then um, we'll get a valuation. So thanks for tuning in and we'll uh, be right back with the next video. Thanks.